Hi everyone, today I'd like to show you how to set up a fully functional MCP server in Python very quickly with just a few packages, how to add tools to it and how to test it with OpenAI. By the way, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the like button, I would really appreciate it. So let's jump right in. We're in a clean project in Python and I'm going to be using Poetry. Um, I have Poetry uh, version 2.1.3 and Python version 3.12.3 so let me just initialize the project accept everything and then i'm gonna add the necessary dependencies so we're gonna need just three dependencies poetry add async io here you can use any version now we're also gonna need fast mcp which is exactly the package that provides mcp functionality i'm gonna add 2.11 because this is the version that I tested with and it works great and then we're also going to need Pydantic now for Pydantic we have to use 2.11.7 at the moment at least because otherwise you're going to get some compatibility issues let me run the command and yeah obviously we can't do that because some dependencies require setting the Python version to be less than um, 4.0 explicitly now let's try again perfect now that we have our dependencies in place I'm gonna add um, a small git ignore file to just ignore pycache and then I'm gonna add everything um, and then we can start actually creating our MCP server setting it up so first of all I'm gonna import fast MCP from uh, fast MCP. Let me just type it out and then I'm going to explain everything. So, Now what did we do? We imported fast MCP, then we created an object of this class, called it my MCP server, and then we define this entry point and we start this asynchronous process which creates a server listening on this host, which is localhost, and then on port 4000 with log level debug to really see what's happening behind the scenes. and. After we've done that, I can also add this to Git and I can start the server by running poetry run python m main. And as you can see, the server started, it's running on HTTP 000 4000. Um, now, by itself, it's actually not really useful because we haven't defined any tools. Um, to define a tool, you can actually write um, at then app which is the name of this variable and then tool and then you just define it as you would define a function for example let's say get users um, and then let's say it returns a list of dictionaries and then let's create this dictionary let's call it users and let's just return it so now that we have one tool in place um, we don't have any users let's define a user quickly Perfect, we have one user, and now we can try it out. So, let me restart the server with this one tool that we defined. Now we want to use an LLM to actually access our MCP server, but the problem is that we only have it on our local machine, whereas LLMs run remotely, and obviously they cannot access our computer. So in order for them to access our computer, we can use ngrok. ngrok is a great service that provides tunneling. This is what it looks like. You just sign up here and you install their CLI. It's really straightforward. Yeah, there is a getting started section here. Really, really straightforward. You can use it on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Then you just set the token that you have in your account and you're good to go. So after you've done that, you go here and say ngrok HTTP 4000 and then you're getting this URL which you can use 
or which anyone can use to access the service that's running on your machine on port 4000 as long as you have this process running. So we're also going to be using this address. Let me copy it. And then I go to OpenAI. Obviously, you're going to need an OpenAI account, but if you're interested in MCP and LLMs, you're, you probably already have one. So I'm in my default project in my personal account. I went to dashboard and then here you can create a chat and here you can define a new tool, MCP server, server, and then you copy this URL, which you have from ngrok and then you also have to add SSE, which stands for server send events. Server send events is a standard that's used for MCP, um, or at least one of the standards. And here you have to give it a label. Let's call it just my MCP server. Here I'm going to say no authentication is required at the moment. And I'm going to say connect. Okay, now it fetched the list of the tools that we have. We have only one tool at the moment. I'm also going to say never require approval for any tool call. And we allow it to use this get users tool. Let's hit add. And here I'm just going to say, you're a helpful assistant, use my MCP server to answer questions. And now we can just ask, what tools do you have access to? Okay, so we can see it listed the tools and it found our get users tool and now that we're getting this information it takes no input parameters and so on and so forth so and now we can say call the get users tool or we, we could also say give me the list of users I'm just gonna say call the get users tool and we get its output which is exactly the user that we defined the only user now to make it a bit more interesting we can add another tool which would add a new user. So let's do that. I'm just gonna copy this existing tool and I'm gonna say add user and then this tool is gonna accept first name, last name and email. And let's say it doesn't return anything and here we do users append. Oops, I accidentally opened terminal, um, users append, and then I'm going to copy these. And here I'm going to just paste the, the variables that we have or the arguments. Last name and email. So that was pretty easy. We defined a new tool and we can restart our server to make sure it's really added. And I'm going to clear the history to make sure what we ask now is not affected but what, by what uh, was kind of already discovered. So let's say again, uh, what tools do you have access to? Oh, now I realized we forgot to add it here. We should obviously click here as well and we should wait a little bit and then we, we can select this tool as well. I'm going to click update. And then I'm going to say again, what tools do you have access to? And now we're getting these two tools, adds a user and fetches the list of users. So I can say, um, add a random user. Okay. And now I can say, give me the users. And now, as you can see, it gives us both our initial user and then this new user that was added to our server. And if we check the locks, as you can see, there, well, quite a lot of things is happening behind the scenes. So this SSE endpoint is constantly being accessed. And if we check ngrok locks, you can also see that some endpoints are accessed. So it, it actually connects to our MCP server and it actually does use this variable. Now, obviously this is not the way to use it in production. In production, you'd have some database behind the scenes instead of having it all in a 
variable. In production, you'd have some authentication and obviously OpenAI interface. So this interface, you wouldn't really use it, but instead you'd have some application that would use your MCP server. But I think that's a good demo project and it gives you a good understanding of how an MCP server actually works and you can really use it as a base for your applications. I hope you liked the video. If so, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. I can also show you how to deploy this thing actually to Google Cloud and host it almost for free really because it would run only if there are some requests. If you'd like to see something like that, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Cheers.